Hey, what's up? I'm Liz. This is Blitz Day DIY, and lately there's been a lot of fun PCB art floating around. Uh, but I find after I like assemble a kit or I get a like a badge or add-on in, um, you know, I make it blink or make it do its thing, and then I don't really know what to do with it afterwards. And these things are so cool. I want to make sure they can like live on in their full glory and not just sit on my desk or find themselves in a drawer or something afterwards. This was especially true with the Star Blinken kit by Dave Darko. Really awesome PCB uh, that imitates a LED effect from the original Star Wars films and then has some great PCB art depicting uh, that famous scene between Han and Leia. So I decided I wanted to create like a shadow box style display for the board. Uh, and I also wanted to make it so that it would use a power supply to power the LEDs and it would have an on off switch for it. Uh, and as a result, this came into existence. So by default, uh, this kit has some power pins on the back, uh, so you can hook up a benchtop supply or another kind of connector. Uh, so what I did was I soldered directly to those leads uh, this fun little combo DC input uh, power switch uh, that is a part that Adafruit sells, but I mean, you could really do whatever you wanted. And then that solved my issue of having uh, power supply power and also having the on off switch as well. Kept the wiring really simple. For the shadow box, uh, first I sketched up in my handy dandy notebook um, made note of the dimensions of the PCB and also kind of got a general shape of what I was looking for as well. And I really sketch all of my designs out at first on paper. I find I just work better that way. Then I of course went into Fusion 360, started designing it up. I was going for a really simple shape with just uh, some rounded corners to match uh, the outline of the PCB because the PCB is really the feature here, not the final case. Uh, and then of course I needed a cutout for that DC power input with the switch. And then I wanted to have built-in standoffs in the shadow box. I thought that would make it look really nice and streamlined so that the, the PCB could just sit right in the box. The only part I was really concerned about was making sure that the holes for the PCB would line up properly so that it would just slot right in. I didn't want to have to really finagle with that too much. Luckily, uh, Dave Darko shared the design files um, which were made in Eagle for the board design on Hackaday, and I'll link that down in the description. Uh, and because uh, Eagle and Fusion 360 are both by Autodesk, they talk to each other. Uh, so I was able to bring that board layout directly into Fusion and then place the board into my design and then use the screw holes um, to sketch in where I wanted the standoffs in the shadow box. So that was really awesome. And then I actually sliced out uh, the standoffs from the model to print just to kind of test fit, make sure they were fitting the screws properly. And I'm glad I did that because I ended up going through three different iterations to get the right wall thickness and everything. So uh, if I hadn't done that, then that means the original print would have had some kind of meh standoffs. Uh, so definitely recommend doing that. If you have like a small part that you just want to check the fit on, on a much larger part, slice it out, do a test print. You'll thank yourself later. And with this print came a filament first for me. I used Filamentum uh, Vertigo Galaxy PLA. It has this really fun sparkle shimmer to it uh, and it prints really beautifully. And I felt like it would reflect the kind of galactic vibe that the Star Blinken board is giving off. So I'm glad I did it. Uh, I usually use more budget friendly filaments. Filamentum is just a little bit pricier, uh, but I think it was worth it in the end. Uh, for a print like this to just have some really a really nice finish on the print um, and to also the I mean can you go wrong with sparkles I don't I don't think you can now when I went to insert the PCB into the shadow box I realized I'd forgotten to account for the eighth inch input part uh, that is has this really fun dead bug soldering that Dave goes over in his assembly video for the board um, and I'd forgotten to account for that in the depth when I was designing up everything. So the stand-ups were a little bit too short. So what I ended up doing was dremeling out the holes so that they go a little bit deeper so I'd be able to screw in some extra standoffs to add that height that I needed to clear um, the part that's sticking out the back of the board. Uh, and in the final design I release, that'll be taken care of. I'll fix the design so that you won't have to do that. Um, but I also didn't want to reprint for something as tiny as that that could easily be fixed with a, just a little bit of handiwork. And after I got those standoffs in, uh, the board slot in fine, was able to screw it in and 
The uh, power switch uh, luckily slotted right in as well. It's a nice snug fit. Uh, eventually I might add like a dab of hot glue to fully secure it, but for now um, it's uh, fine for what I need it for. And uh, that's, that's basically it. Uh, Shadow Box is designed so that it can kind of sit upright and be totally balanced, or you could get some like wall tack and stick it on the wall. That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing eventually. I'm hoping to design similar displays for boards uh, and PCB art just to kind of give them a place to really kind of exist in all their their glory and I hope others might be inspired to do it too uh, because I, I think it's a shame people put all this work into the PCB design and everything to then have it just kind of sit in a box or whatever um, is really too bad when you could really have it as art on display like in your home or work area or whatever so yeah definitely not the last time I'll be doing something like this uh, and I hope others will go for it as well. It was actually, um, I saw a Hackaday Supercom, they had like the shitty add-on wall where um, they had little plugs to put them all in, they were all going. I think that'd be really cool if people started doing things like that for their own personal collections and everything. I think that could be really awesome. But yeah, let's go do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. I'll have links down in the description to this file on Thingiverse, as well as links to the Star Blinken PCB on Tindy by Dave Darko, as well as his videos and resources for the project as well. Uh, thank you for watching, consider subscribing more content like this, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.